Hello my soccer universe. This has been a topic that has been on my lips for quite a while. I just didn't find the right time to do it. Now it's international break. We are after the semifinals of the Nations League. I thought it's time to talk about it. No, it's not showing off my entire Italy collection. Although, yeah, this is my entire Italy jersey collection. And the video that I made uh, two years ago is more or less out of date already. It's also not about the recent form of the Italian national team, which unfortunately is not to my liking at all, being a huge Italy fan. And no, I'm not even talking about the new jerseys that Adidas came out. Uh, almost a nightmare scenario for me, because for me, Adidas, as much as I like them, for many, 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 many teams, for me, the Italian national team is sacrosanct. And a German company, we already had Puma for so long and now there is adidas even more german in a way step stepping in a german should ne a german company should never take over a classic team like the italians or class c teams because of all the sportish cult that um adidas projects there was always a class to the italian national team jersey and it starts and I keep repeating with my favorite jersey up there uh i just love for me, if it's done right, nothing, absolutely nothing beats the Italian national team kit. The Azure Blue, and you see here, especially up there, but here a few prime examples with a touch of the Italian flag, preferably on the collar and on the trims. Uh, it's just a sight to behold and unfortunately Adidas with adding the white stripes up top, although there's some nice little nuggets in there, it doesn't look Italian to me. But that's not the topic of the video. The topic is why do, Italy, why do the Italian national team change so often their logo? And how confused is this? And I took actually some time to prepare a few graphics. And I, I have to tell you, all the logos that I'm showing you here, I did a little bit search of myself, but I, but I more or less went, I decided then to cut it short. I went to Football Kit Archive, drag out from uh, the main national teams, meaning all that won the World Cup, and I added the Dutch and I added Portugal in there. I took all the crests that they had available there, and then I selected not the federation crests but the crests that were actually worn on the shirts and i decided to display to you the most recent nine uh where i feel there has been a significant change and yes they might not be correct and i give you the year when they were used uh again don't take this like fully as this is the letter of the law this is online information it may or may not be entirely correct but it is what i could found and it is really really illustrative we're going through it uh, in alphabetical fashion. Let's start with Argentina. You see a few variations of the crest, but basically since 1986, the latest, it has been stable. With the only addition of the third star up top, we see even that previous iterations, we always had the AFA, yes, potentially 1965, although I quite cannot believe it, there was a different font up there, but other than that, we always had the golden shield with the Argentinian flag, maybe a laurel wreath around it and an AFA logo where the A's have the same letter and the F is kind of a little bit ornamental in there. Very, very much the same through time. Then next one up, Brazil. Yes, there have been a few iterations and yes, the shield has changed shape and maybe the outlines were thicker or thinner and the cross and there are more of our variation. I just uh, try to pick a few that are a little bit more, uh, that show a little bit more the difference. But here uh, have been many changes, but the basic shape was always there. A blue shield with a golden outline with a green cross, also outline gold with a white cross up top, like the Portuguese style cross and then CBD in there. Only between 1980 and 1991 uh, was there a different crest, still with the same shape, but it was all blue and displaying, of course, the Jules Rimet Cup that Brazil had won at that point. Uh, and yes, maybe the shadings were slightly different here and there, but and the stars up top did change. But overall, it was all the same. The recent logo is more an evolution than a revolution. And yes, we can discuss maybe the dark blue outline should have been yellow. 
uh, to make it a little bit more uh, st stand out, but it's not egregious in any, any way. Do you prefer the old one? Yes. But the new one, again, evolution, not revolution. Let's move further. England. I mean, England, we can go all the way back to 1879. And yes, there have been variations with stars, blah, 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 or, you know, an all red logo. But basically, these is the ones that I found most differently. Uh, the old crest, okay, then they went to the... Um, the head, uh, by the, I think it was the National College of Arms or whatever, however how it's called, had the crest designed for them with the three lions and the ten roses. And that has been the look for England. Whether they put an England up top or an England on the, on the bottom or keep it uh, relatively uh, plain as they have done recently, whether there's a star up top or not, always been more or less looking the same. Next one, France. Yes, uh, again, here I'm not so sure about the numbers, but we have the original craze. But you know, there were two kind of French national teams. It was kind of a confused times. But starting in 1970, they have been using the same crest up until and including the 2006 World World Cup a little bit beyond when they came up with a new one. The only uh, change that was there was a star. Before that, they had a rooster similar to the one that we have now with a little bit more color add, add, add on, which actually looks really, really cool. Now it's more a monochromatic uh, thing. The only one of these crests that sticks out is the rooster that looks to the right and it's kind of made of these bands. I personally don't think it's a bad logo, but it pales with whatever else was there. And yes, the one that was used from 1970 on uh, looked a little bit dated, but that was also the charm for it. I personally like the current one. This is my fav favorite. It really, really looks nice. Moving over to another eternal rival of the <laughs> of the Italians, Germany. Forget the 1938 one. It's just for completeness' sake. Sake there. I I, I was considering not include the Cleveland one, but it's for completeness' sake. But after World War II, when they started playing again, the eagle in the circle where it says Deutsche Fußballbund around, that was the logo. The eagle has changed, more or less. And then in 2003, they got another ring added to get a little bit of German flag up there. Uh, you know, then, you know, monochrome, sometimes not mono monochrome, but basically it is a very unique, very identifiable look. We can discuss how, which eagle looks best and so on, and whether this eagle looks even more right, whether they shouldn't use the one from the coat of arms, whatever it is, very identifiable, very much Germany. You see this, you know, this is Germany. And you can go back in time, it almost always looks very, very similar. Uh, the Netherlands, um, we always had the lion. Yes, here, this is when we won, when 1996, they came up with the first kind of really modernist logo. This was a Nike, the Nike had just take, take, oh, taken over and they went from the lion with the sword and the arrows uh, to this very modernized logo, which I, honestly, I didn't dislike it. It looked odd a little bit. But given that uh, the lion was always a little bit hard to see, I, I, I actually did like this logo overall. However, in 2014, they came up with the current current crest. This was such a huge improvement. It looks old without being old because, uh, as, as you can see, the lion doesn't hold any weapons in his hand. It's more like the 1973 and 1979, who admittedly look all a teeny bit ridiculous, uh, if you're honest. I personally like the 1965 one really, really, uh, pro pro probably even more than that. But I think the current one, that's a winner. That's an absolute winner. Uh, we have, I have a few more to go for you. Portugal. Yeah, Portugal is not much for change. Either the old code or the, the still code of arms or the, the modern cross. There has been no change for Port Portugal. We have two more. Spain. There's also a rich history, but you can see that basically since 1981, it always has been a coat of arms. The coat of arms is also present on the two previous eagle logos. There's just the eagle. It's superimposed on, on the eagle. So also going through, it is the coat, coat, coat of arms. It has been put on a shield, which is probably my preferred version, although initially I didn't like it. And then the current version is a monochromatic version of it, which is kind of, yeah, okay. But it's a down, down, down from this very intricate panel. Uh, also noted in 1924 logo that has been used on the recent uh, shirts. I think at least in the 98, they had this on the collar here, which I think was, was a really nice touch. And then I want to end in Uruguay because that's the only other country where there is also a huge change happening. But that change happened in 1970. 
And since then, the only thing that has changed there is maybe the proportions of the logo and also the ball has slightly changed. But I and sometimes put on the shield, sometimes not. But that's the main change of the logo of Ur 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 Uruguay. I have to say the first few up there, they look more like a club crest. I really like the one they had on 1966. That is the one they should bring back. But having said all that, you see, most huge national teams have for the longest of times, and I'm talking here 30, 40 years or more, a very identifiable and the same logo. And then here is Italy. What a mess. It is a con as confused of a legacy as you can imagine. Uh, let me say it up front. I really like the original one, just a Scudetto. I don't mind if there's Italia put them up up top. I think it doesn't look bad. And uh, in when they put it in 2000, I was never worried with the three stars. I, I don't know why it's why it was like like that. Uh, they never wore it on the shirt with three stars, but so also be it. They had three stars back then. Um, the only thing I would have liked is that instead of the black outline and the black background in Italia, that this is blue. This was actually then kind of achieved in 2017 which to me was such a huge improvement on the vile and ridiculous logo that was worn, was conceived in late 2005, was worn for the first time at the World Cup in Germany. And we had until the logo came, the new logo came out in 2017 with a slight adaptation, which was an improvement on a 2005 version. However, before we go into that one and then destroy the current logo, uh, I also want to point out the 1984 and the 1992 logo. I have to say the 1984 logo is the one that I first saw and the, which is on this beautiful 1990 home shirt, which I have to say I don't dislike. It is different. It is not this. It is not had the same class like the Scudetto, but it has actually something nice uh, that it is the circular crest. You have the uh, Italian flag kind of it rises up. It carries Italia and then the three stars kind of also in succession. You can see it's 33, 38, uh, 1982 in a way that looks actually, you know, there's a rise in there, which I actually really liked. Now, is it better than the Scudetto? No, it's probably not, but I didn't mind it. The 92 logo, I actually found one of the worst because, I mean, it should be an eye with a blue dot on the eye. Uh, the three stars, okay, but the Italian flag element gets totally lost and that uh, Fiji G, Federazione Italiana Gioco Calcio, needs to be written in full letters and then all uh, all to the, to the left node in centered somehow. It just is not a balanced logo at all. I think if that logo would get rid of the text and then we had at least the uh, Italian flag rising a little bit further up, I think I could live with it more. But this was a devolution. However, it's not as bad because when Kappa took over, they went back to the original crest. And then the next ev ev evolution came. And I said, the logo that I wrote right here is a 2005 logo um, is just wild to me. It is everything that Italy is not. Strict corners. Puma took over. A German company. Strict, strict. There's no elegance to it. It's all arrows down. Then 984, there's a rise up here. It's all down. The stars, you have three stars. Why don't don't, don't, don't put it up? Why do you put them down there? And then the this weird little ball. And then what's even worse is that the white stripe is wider than the other two. It looks very unbalanced. I always hated this one. Now, fortunately, they won the World Cup, so they got a little bit of a redo, and I actually think they did it better. Not great, but better, because they increased the ball for Fiji G. And then, yeah, I don't like how they arranged the four stars. I still think you should have taken the stars out and put them up top, or get rid of the Italian, put the four stars there. But at least it looks a little, a little bit more, but still, all these corners. There's no elegance to it. Someone must have thought the same because in 2017 they came up with what I consider potentially the second best logo, if not the best on this list. Uh, the shield shape has been reestablished. I really like the upper part that is a little bit pointed. So you have, it's kind of, it has curves, but it has points. It's very, very elegant. 
the one point of contention is that this Fiji G ball is still there. I think without that, if you if you take this out, just have the shield up there, round it up top, and then write Italia over. And you don't even honestly, we don't even need that Italia. But I understand it's there. I think this looks this looks really 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 good. I mean, look look at it. It looks Italy. Yes, I think it's a little bit too long. I honestly think that it is a little bit too long. Cut it here, make you know, get rid of the Italia, get, get rid of the ball, put it down. I think you have a perfect logo. It's a little bit too elongated for my li liking, but it's absolutely, it's, that's nitpicking. The 1952 is a little bit too squat. I think the 1942, those are perfect dimensions, in a way. Where you have enough of the Italian shield, and then, you know, a little bit. I love that logo. You can see I have this shirt i have the two away jer uh, 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 jerseys i got the first one released so i thought this is horrible and then through it it i got even the special version here i love that logo it looked better it made a bad shirt look good this is what a good logo does and then adidas of course doesn't want to take i mean i understand a little bit of that because you know they're from the same town they're huge rivals adidas doesn't want to take over the logo has been used for puma Hi, I don't know who designed this logo. Were these Puma people? Probably. However, what Adidas does is it dumbs it down. It is not as wild as the 2005 logo, but it looks dumb. It looks childish. It's how to say. I mean, first the blue background uh, is gone. It is a white background, which looks already odd. Uh, then the rounded bottom <laughs> it looks cheap. Again, it might be due to the background, but the white is much thicker than the uh, green and the red. The Italia is in such a stern German font. It doesn't look good. And it's not even half heavy. I mean, the Federation logo, the, the new on the cover, is even, uh, even a worse abomination in, 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 in a way. But this is just... It, it is a dumbed down version of a really good one that could use some improvement. That's how I see it. But what overall is, why do we have the need to change the logo so often? You hit goal in 2000. Make some color adjustments. You don't need to do anything anymore. No, you come up with an atrocious logo that admittedly you at least carried on then for uh, more than 10 years. But then you change again. And what uh, 1984, 92, all the other countries were more or less the same, except for the Dutch and the uh, French, were more or less the same through their entire history. And Italy is changing, 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 changing. The only thing that saves Italy in this case is they have a very identifiable and beautiful jersey that usually the logo cannot really destroy. But overall, Ace is just confused and horrendous. I have to say, brand identity, exactly zero. And at this point, I even have to hope that Adidas will have to change this logo soon again. I at least would love that. I think they should take a page out of the book of other nations, especially what Nike have done with the French with the Dutch in 2014 and go retro one way or the other. And for the Italy logos, there wasn't even time enough to put some of the pre-war logos in where they had the uh, white cross on a red shield from the house of Savoy, which actually looked also kind of interesting, but wouldn't fly these days. But yeah, that is it. My biggest gripe with Italy at the moment and what a confused logo his history is. Do you share my views? Uh, what would you like to see on a jersey from the Azzurri? Is it this logo? Is it the one from uh, with the Scudetto, like up here? Or do you want to have one from the 90 spec? Did you like the one that they won the World Cup in 2006? Do you like the one for Adidas? Or should they come back to something more simple? I really would like to hear your opinion on that. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!